April April <laughs> April eleventh, twelve thirteen PM District Court Courtroom number two. I'm not going to restart the recording. I think it's funny to leave in bloopers like that. Uh, anyway, let's go. <laughs> Court will now reconvene. Mr. Payne, please call your witness. This next person is someone who witnessed the crime as it happened. The prosecution calls Miss Dahlia Hawthorne to the stand. Dahlia Hawthorne. What's with this stiff silence? In my long career as a judge, I have been deceived by many witnesses. It's my job to doubt, to take no one at their word. But in your case, I must admit that you radiate a glow of complete sincerity. I can't believe you actually said that! Yeah, me either. Good lord. <laughs> Oh, um, now then, witness, could you please state your full name? I, um... Don't worry, sweetie, there's no need to be nervous. If anyone says anything rude, you can be sure I'll cut them right down to size. And I will bash them with my gavel. I love how they look straight at me when they say that. Um, thank you for calming my nerves. You're all so nice. I... I almost feel right at home. Not at all. It was nothing. If we may move on now, what is your full name and occupation? My name is Dahlia Hawthorne. I'm a junior in literature at Ivy University. I just want to say, it's an honor for me to be here in your noble presence. The honor is all mine. Oh no, the honor is all mine. Well, we know whose milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> it's an interesting reference. Um, sir? Is there, is there something I can help you with? You just go on and say whatever it is on your mind. I'm sure there must be some kind of mistake. Feeny wouldn't kill anyone. I just know it. Yes, yes. I can see why you'd say that. She's gonna be a tough witness, alright. It only took her 12 seconds to wrap them all around her little finger. Now then, please proceed with your testimony. Let's hear about what you witnessed on the day of the incident, if you please. What I witnessed. I had been planning to go back to Feeney's place after class was over. Feeney and Dougie, they were talking behind the building. Then suddenly, Dougie got all wobbly and just collapsed. That's when Feeney noticed that I was there. I went to go and find some other students and they called the authorities. I, I don't know what to say. According to you, Miss Hawthorne, the defendant didn't do anything wrong. <gasps> young lady, as old as I am, even I recall how hot the flames of young passion can burn. Nevertheless, it is my job to discover the truth. Please, tell us the truth. But, but I, I would never... That's more than enough, witness. I won't allow this to continue. What do you mean by that? Please, just let me proceed with my cross-examination, Your Honour. I, for one, don't plan to win my case on a bunch of paper-thin lies. <laughs> Teehee, you haven't changed a bit, Mia Fey. What's this? So, you two are acquainted? Yes, we've met before. Once. In any case, Miss Fey, the floor is all yours. It's good to see you again, Madame Fay. Madame? I'm no one's grandma yet, girly. Cross-examination. Okay, we know this is not the truth, right? Because we have the, um... 
We haven't looked at this in a while, this here, uh, core record. But... I believe... Oh, I'm not sure actually. I might, I might need to press. I've forgotten exactly what piece of evidence we need. <laughs> and yeah, I haven't actually played this case in like a month, so I had forgotten what was in, in the court record. Anyway, hold it. Now, unless I'm mistaken, Feeny, I mean, Mr. Wright, is in the art department. If that's the case, then what were you doing by the pharmacology building? Well, I'm in the literature department. I'm studying Japanese Senru poetry. Oh ho ho, how wonderful. It's that humorous yet satirical style of haiku, yes? Nothing left to do. When a man reaches this age, sleep is his best friend. That's supposed to be poetry? Sounds more like a midlife crisis. For me to get to the art department, I have to walk through the back area. Through, sorry, through that back area. Ah, yes, I see. That makes sense. When I want to enter the courthouse, I always walk through the front doors. How else would you enter? Teleportation? Feeny and Dougie, they were talking behind the building. <laughs> so, who is this Dougie person? Oh, I'm sorry, Doug Swallow. We were dating until about eight months ago. So what were Dougie, <coughs> Mr. Swallow, and Mr. Wright talking about anyway? How, how can you be so mean? I would never, I would never eavesdrop. I wasn't raised to be so rude and unrefined. That's right, Ms. Faye. Don't drag the witness down to your level. Why am I being demonized here? Please, go on. What did you say next? Are you saying that the victim just collapsed on his own? Y yes. In other words, the defendant never touched the victim. Is that right? I was watching the whole time. Feeney never did a thing to Dougie. I press it for no good reason, I just know the judge will get angry with me. Hmm, so what should I do about her testimony just now? Um, I don't think we have proof that he did a thing. Uh, let's leave it for the moment. Hmm, I suppose her statement works in our favor, for now. I'll hold off on looking into it any deeper until it's necessary. Very well, young lady. Please go on with your testimony. <sighs> yeah, I can't quite remember what it is I'm supposed to be doing at this point. Um, let me see, let me see. And what did Mr. Wright say when he saw you? Uh, I'm sorry, I, I was so flustered that I... I really don't remember. But please forgive me. You don't remember? Well, that's common enough. Sometimes I can't recall a sentence I passed only minutes prior. Please, someone, anyone, stop him before he gets hurt by me. When you say students, do you mean students from the pharmacology department? Yes, they're all very fond of their drugs. Please try to stay on topic. <laughs> oh my god. So to find some pharmacology students, you went to the labs, correct? That's what I was planning to do, but in the end, I wound up not going. A group of about ten research students came running out of the building entrance. Somehow they all seemed to know what was going on. The students knew what was going on? But how could the students have known what was going on? Well, I don't know for sure that they knew what had happened. It's just they all seemed kind of excited about something. Hmm. Doesn't look like I'm going to get any more info about the students. So, did the students call the police? Y yes. I, I was just so... I was so panicked. Hmm. Yes, well anyone would have been, my dear. That girl. She's telling a super obvious lie and she knows it. She's just pretending to protect Mr. Wright. 
Yes, that's got to be it. Way to go, Mia. Okay, that means I'm gonna have to dig deep to find the contradiction on this one. Does it? It's a super obvious lie. You shouldn't, you shouldn't need to dig deep, right? That, does, that doesn't follow. Uh, I believe what I need to do is point out uh, that Phoenix did do something. Possibly Phoenix's testimony saying he fell on the umbrella. I'm gonna throw down a quick save, just to... in case I mess up. <laughs> but I think that's it. I think it's you give Phoenix his testimony. Addiction! Nope, that wasn't it. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe the umbrella? Okay, I'm lost. I don't know what the contradiction is. Um, <laughs> um... This is awkward. <laughs> uh, got wobbly and just collapsed. We know he didn't. We know that he was pushed. But do we have proof of that? It doesn't seem like we have we have any proof. Um, or do we need to press again and, and go to the other bit? Maybe we need to. Hang on. Okay, you've seen this already, so I'm just gonna fast forward. Yeah, I can show contradiction here. Feeble lies are not very becoming, Miss Hawthorne. So let's drop them, shall we? What? I I would never. Ms. Faye, I will not allow you to badger this witness. I, I believe the defense is engaged in a, a fishing expedition. That is, uh, she has no supporting... Please don't glare at me like that. I am just doing my job. Now then, Miss Hawthorne. <laughs> the defendant's palm print was found on Mr. Swallow's leather jacket. Yeah, but this is the, the thing I needed to do. I needed to point this out. But we didn't have it in the court record, so I didn't know how to do it. Apparently you just say show contradiction and it just happens. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it has already been shown that Mr. Wright did, in fact, push the victim. What? There's no need to try to cover for the defendant. It would be much better if you came out and told us the whole truth. Uh, don't, don't encourage, like, you don't have to force her to come out in a courtroom. That's just, that's gross. That's gross, Mia. Hmm... There's nothing to worry about, young lady. Just tell us everything that you saw. Y yes Your Honor. I- I will. If you don't mind, I- I'd like to re revise my testimony. Looks like we're finally getting somewhere. Um, actually, I didn't see the moment he pushed Dougie. It didn't look like they were fighting, and I didn't hear anything unusual either. Okay, well, that's a contradiction. The victim fell on top of his umbrella. There was a loud sound when this happened. <laughs> you say you didn't hear anything unusual. Is that correct? Yes, that's why I was very relaxed looking at the scenery around me. That's nice, but I find that just a little odd. Little and odd, as a treat. I have here the testimony of your boyfriend, Mr. Phoenix Wright. And he clearly testified to the effect that when he pushed the victim, he heard a sharp, loud noise. I he said that? If you were really that close to the two of them, why didn't you hear this noise as well? I... Well, maybe the noise just wasn't all that memorable. But according to Mr. Wright's testimony, it was a sharp noise like a snap. There's no way a noise like that could fail to make an impression. Ack. Um... May I have a moment to answer? M by all means. I know the reason why I didn't hear the noise. You see, the truth is... 
I had my headphones on, and I was listening to music at the time. H headphones? You mean that both of your ears were covered? The rain was just beginning to let up, but it seemed as though Thor wasn't ready for his fun to come to an end yet. So the sky continued to flash and rumble. Thunder and lightning, huh? Yes, I'm afraid of the sound of thunder. It's very, very frightening me. <laughs> so I put my headphones on to block it out. Does that work? Alright. <laughs> well, Your Honor. As you can see, there weren't any contradictions in her testimony after all. I mean, there were at least two. Hmm. Wait a sec, Mia. That testimony just now. She said something that could totally change this whole case. There was lightning. Your Honor, there is a problem with the witness's testimony. W what do you mean? Didn't you notice? She said there was lightning, correct? Yes, what about it? Well, lightning is actually a large discharge of electricity in the atmosphere, am I right? Now's not the time for a science lesson, Ms. Fay. Yes, Your Honor. Anyway, since the cause of death was electrocution, isn't it possible that the victim died from being hit by a bolt of lightning? Oh, ah! Hmm, I must admit that the thought had not occurred to me. Just what kind of thoughts do occur to this guy anyway? This entire case is built on the premise that Mr. Doug Swallow was murdered. But that very premise itself is mistaken. The defense believes that Mr. Swallow was, in fact, the victim of a stray bolt. It, it appears the defense may be onto something. Could it be that the death was actually accidental? <laughs> Alright, you did it, Mia. I'll be taking that not guilty now if you don't. <laughs> I'm hurt that you have such a low opinion of me, Ms. Faye. Huh? I'm not a fool, you know. The prosecution has done its research, Your Honor. We found that there were no lightning strikes on that day at that location. What? What's more? We have evidence that the electrical cable is definitely linked to this case. E evidence, Mr. Payne? Well, what is this evidence? This affidavit. And who is this affidavit from? The pharmacology students who were conducting experiments in their labs that day. Allow me to read out to the court the testimony of the pharmacology students. All equipment in the labs lost power all of a sudden at around 3pm that day. Was it a blackout? All of the lab's equipment runs on high voltage, Your Honor. So you're saying the equipment lost power because... Precisely. They lost power because of the severed electrical cable. The power outage occurred at approximately 3pm, which fits with the time of death listed in the autopsy report. Exactly. In other words, the victim died as a result of touching the severed electrical cable. According to the students, the cables were very old. They were planning on having them replaced in the near future. Hmm, I see. Apparently the cables have become so brittle that even the smallest bump would have caused them to break. Students' testimony added to the court record. However, there is one thing that troubles me. If the cable could have been broken by any small bump, then it wouldn't have snapped if it hadn't been bumped into, correct? Well, I suppose you could say that. Hmm. Miss Faye, do you have any thoughts regarding the cause of the severed cable? Your Honor. I don't like how this is looking one bit. I have to come up with something to try to regain some momentum. If it pleases the court, the defense would like to state its opinion. Well then, let's hear it. Who or what was it that caused the cable to break? This is it. This is why the cable snapped. Well, Your Honor? I believe the only thing that has snapped is the mind of the defense. Wow. Wow. Oh, that was one of your best lines yet, Your Honor. Ugh. Ouch, that was harsh. Please, Your Honor, give me one more chance. 
I believe I have infinite chances on this. Um, but yeah, what happened was Phoenix pushed Doug into the pole and it broke the cable, so I should have chosen Phoenix. But you get the idea of what I was trying to do, I hope. Your Honor, please think back to Mr. Wright's testimony. The defendant's testimony? He said that after he pushed the victim, he heard a loud, sharp noise. Now, this happened at around 3pm, correct? Yes, that sounds right. Wait, are you saying that... The lab equipment lost power at 2.55pm, which fits right in Mr. Wright's timeline. In other words, it was Mr. Wright's shove that caused the power outage. Yes, the prosecution also came to that same conclusion. And it was that very shove that caused Mr. Swallow to be electrocuted. I'm afraid I can't agree with you there, Mr. Payne. Well, what's that supposed to mean? Take a good look at where the victim landed after being shoved. See the umbrella? It's by the electrical pole. That's right, the victim banged into that pole as a result of being pushed. It was that impact that caused the cable to break. Hmm... Well, that makes sense, and then the victim was electrocuted. I'm sorry, Your Honor, but no, it doesn't make sense at all. If the victim was shoved into the far pole, then he couldn't have been electrocuted by the severed, bleh, electrocuted by the severed cable in the foreground here. Ah! <laughs> in other words, someone other than my client must have electrocuted the victim. I mean, it could have been Phoenix later. Like, after he'd done the shove, he could have done the zapping, but you know, whatever. Order! Order in the court! Ah, the lamentations of my enemy. How I've longed to hear them. It, it's true. The defense is absolutely, absolutely correct. There doesn't seem to be any way the defendant could have done it. Um, Mr. Judge, sir? May I say something? The Madame Attorney's explanation. She said some things that are a little different than I remember them. What? What, what the? Please, just once more. May I please testify one last time? Please, Mr. Judge? Of course it's alright. Just go right ahead and give your new testimony. This is it. She's finally starting to show her true colours. What I Witnessed, Part 2. The truth is, Feeney pushed him twice. The first time was into the electrical pole. That's when the cable broke. Then Dougie tried his best to run away from him. But Feeney caught up and crashed into him from behind. The cable snapping and Dougie being electrocuted, it all occurred in less than a minute. Hmm. So after being shoved, the victim got up and tried to run away. And that is when the defendant pushed him for the second time. I'm so sorry, Feeney, but I, I just have to tell the truth. Am I doing the right thing? Am I, Mr. Judge? Of course you are, my dear. As painful as it may seem, you are. Now then, Ms. Faye, you may proceed with your cross-examination. Okay, so the problem here is we know what time the cable broke. It's 2.55, right? Because if we look at uh, this affidavit, 2.55pm is when the cable broke. We also know when Doug was electrocuted. By looking at this watch here, and that was 5 past 3, so there's a 10 minute gap. Therefore, objection! <laughs> That's enough, witness. I'm afraid I don't understand. You will in a minute. Could you please take a look at this picture? Oh, that medicine. That's the one Feeney likes to take for his cold. It's not the medicine I want you to look at. It's the wristwatch. It stopped at the precise time the victim was electrocuted. In other words, 3.05pm. Yes, and your point is, Ms. Faye? My point is this. What time was it when the lab suffered that power outage due to the cable snapping? Well, according to the student's testimony, the answer is clear. It was 2.55pm. Yag! Would you care to explain this to the court, Ms. Dahlia Hawthorne? What exactly happened during this 10 minute interval? The defense proposes that 
It was during this interval that the real murderer killed Mr. Doug Swallow. But order! Order in the court! What is this about? This is nonsense! The real murderer? Even you can't deny the time between the cable break and electrocution are completely unaccounted for. Then who was it? Who else are you saying could have done it? There's only one person who could have murdered Mr. Swallow. Only after my client had left the scene was there a window opportunity for the real killer. Miss Faye, is the defense ready to indict someone as this real killer? It's finally time. This is the moment I've been waiting for. Yes, Your Honor. We are ready. Very well. But remember, if you accuse the wrong person, you'll be penalised. Think very carefully before you speak, Miss Faye. Now then, Miss Faye, let's have it. Who is the real killer? It's Dahlia Hawthorne! It could only have been you, Dahlia Hawthorne. Wah! Uh, how? Uh, how can you... Th the defense is grasping at straws. Ten minutes passed between the time the cable broke and the time of the electrocution. What exactly were you doing that whole time, Ms. Hawthorne? Were you really listening to some music while cheering them both on as they fought? I find it hard to believe you didn't lift a finger to stop the men dearest to you. Order! Order! Miss Faye! What? I mean, why? That is to say... Miss Hawthorne, I believe you did witness the two men fighting on that day. However, after Mr. Wright pushed the victim and subsequently left the scene, it was you who pushed Mr. Swallow to his death by your very own hands. Ah! How can you say something so mean, Madame Faye? I... I didn't do anything. Miss Faye, this is a very serious charge you are. Your Honor, please, I have something I want to say. Y y you, w what is it? Please, please strike everything the defense just said now from the record. What the? Are you daft? You're totally wrong, Miss Faye. Dolly, she, she couldn't do something like that. Mr. Wright, get back in your seat. Bailiff, grab that man. Ah, Chew, chew. Leave my dolly alone. Achoo. <coughs> that boy. He's gotten himself in way over his head. Oh, Mr. Grossberg, you're back. It seems I've arrived just in the nick of time. I found the police report on that incident in your newspaper clipping. Police report added to the court record. Thank you so much, this is exactly what I was hoping for. You'd better take a good look at it. It, uh, details how you came to lose your boyfriend. Now then, the defense has made a very serious accusation. Mr. Payne, what do you have to say about this? Well, really, Your Honor, I, I, that is, I... May I interrupt you for just a moment, Mr. Prosecutor? Ah, oh, don't you worry, my dear. I have the situation well in hand. <laughs> uh, that, that is I. Um, go right ahead. Madame Faye, are you seriously accusing me of killing my sweet Dougie? Yes, I am. Not only am I saying you murdered Doug Swallow, but you also tried to pin the whole thing on your current lover, Phoenix Wright. I told you that you should let me handle this. Uh, sorry, p please go ahead. How can you say that? I'm absolutely devoted to my dear Feeney. The notion that I would try to frame him is ludicrous. This is all just too much for poor little me to bear. Ah, I believe the girl is trying to ask what on earth her motive would be. The answer to that lies somewhere in this police report. It must. Eight months ago, an incident occurred in the basement cafeteria of this building. And then... 
That same day, the two of them accidentally meet. Your Honor. I should look at this report. Uh, victim Diego Armando, suspect Dahlia Hawthorne. Armando um, poison, blood, 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 blah, 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 blah. Your Honor, the defense requests further testimony from Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. F further testimony? What about? About the events of the day when she first met the defendant, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Attention! What could that possibly have to do with this case? Attention! The witness claims that she has no reason to frame the defendant, am I correct? Well, I have evidence that suggests that she, in fact, had a very good reason. Very well, then. The court grants the defense's request. Young lady, would you mind staying on for just a bit longer? Of course not, Mr. Judge. Get ready for the battle of your life, Dahlia Hawthorne. How I met my Feeny. I first met my darling Feeny eight months ago. It's like we were destined to meet in this very courthouse's basement reading room. The moment our eyes met, my heart skipped a beat. We've been going out ever since that fateful day. Oh my god, we're so lovey-wovey, it literally makes people sick. Literally make people- oh, we literally make people sick. It's just jealousy, I think. Oh my god, <laughs> Phoenix. Mr. Wright, do that again and you'll be held in contempt of court. And now we enter the final act of our little drama. As we used to say in the days of my youth, go get her. <laughs> How I met my Feeny. Okay, uh, so this is important. Uh, destined to me, skip to bees. And yeah, you can see the bit from Phoenix is not in the testimony here. We don't have to worry about that. <laughs> Listen to me, Mia. That woman has the judge in the palm of her hand, you see. So the only way to discredit her is to find a contradiction in her testimony. I forget what a contradiction is, so I'm going to start pressing a little bit. So until that time, you had been dating Doug Swallow? Y yes, I'm a real fool, I know. Letting my emotions change so quickly, I'm ashamed of myself. No, no, not at all. Look at me, I'm infamous for changing my mind. My critics have even taken to calling me Judge Fickle. <laughs> Maybe you should look for a different line of work. Despite that, however, he always, always hands down the correct verdict. That's why some people also call him the Great Judgini. If you say so. I mean, he's handed down incorrect verdicts a couple of times. It's like we were destined to meet in this very courthouse's basement reading room. Hold it. The courthouse reading room? That's a strange place to meet the love of your life. That's not true, Madame Fay. After all, Feeney was... Feeney was not only an art student, but he was also planning on becoming a lawyer. I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about you, Miss Hawthorne. What was a literature student like you doing in a courthouse reading room? I mean, it's a reading room. She's a literature student. I mean, I, I can see the connection. <laughs> this line of questioning is a waste of time. It has nothing to do with our murder case. Miss Fay, I'm warning you. It has, it has nothing to do with Mr. Swallow's case. I have to rem remember the judge is on Dahlia's side. I better tread carefully. Your Honor, if you'll allow me some latitude, I think I can establish relevance. Please ask her to continue on with her testimony. Very well. Young lady, I've got a simple question for you. What were you doing downstairs in the courthouse reading room? If it pleases Your Honor, the answer is simply this. I had come to this courthouse to do some research for a paper I was writing. That's a lie, Dahlia Hawthorne. Because we have this police report, which says that you were the suspect in this other case. <laughs> Miss Hawthorne, you weren't here because of your research paper, were you? Didn't you actually come here for a much more important reason? What is the meaning of that cocky smile on your face, Miss Fay? Eight months ago, right here in this very courthouse, there was another tragedy. Another tragedy? Do you mean the incident in which an attorney was poisoned? The name of the suspect that incident is listed here in this report. 
and that name is Dahlia Hawthorne. What? D Dahlia H Hawthorne? Yes, the sweetie pie of everyone's eye, Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. She was the prime suspect in a criminal case just eight months ago. Order, order, order. This is unbelievable. It's true then, the loveliest rose can hide the coolest thorn. Miss Faye, th that's not fair. You can't slander a witness with an unrelated case. Um... I, Winston Payne, will not allow it. Mr. Prosecutor, I believe I was speaking. Uh, pardon me. Go right ahead. It's true that about eight months ago, the police expressed some interest in me. Hmm, expressed some interest, huh? Mr. Judge, sir, I know I'm under oath, so I'll tell you the absolute truth. I did not commit the crime that occurred during that incident eight months ago. I see. Okay, I've tied the two crimes together. Now I've just got to stay on the offensive. Well done, Mia. Oh, you really lit a fire in my heart. And my buttocks. Gross. I can hardly tell which is more inflamed, my spirit or my hemorrhoids. Gross, gross, gross. The poisoning. I met the lawyer who was poisoned to discuss something in the cafeteria that day. I left my seat for just a moment, and that's when it happened. From what I heard, it was a liquid poison that is lethal at just two teaspoons. Not only that, I heard it was a very special kind of poison. So you see, I'm innocent. I wouldn't even know where to get a poison like that. Hmm. So that's what happened here eight months ago. However, as you've heard from the witness's testimony, she had nothing to do with it. I think the defense is just about out of tricks. I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Payne, but I'm afraid the defense has many more tricks up its sleeve today, and I'll be sure to show them to you before the end of this cross-examination. See, she's pointing so that he can see up her sleeve. See all the tricks? <laughs> what the? Why does the defense suddenly feel stronger? Aha! Mia, you're glowing with a true lawyer's aura, my dear! That proud posture and self-confidence, absolutely smashing! <laughs> Okay, so the problem here is that we know where she can get the poison. Because if we take a look... The fact is that Doug Swallow was a pharmacology student. And pharmacology students can do chemistry things. <laughs> like make poisons. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's the answer. You wouldn't know how to get that kind of poison. I don't believe you. What? In fact, you had easy access to that kind of poison, didn't you? At your boyfriend's lab. M boyfriend You mean the victim, Doug Swallow? That's right. Up until eight months ago, Miss Hawthorne was dating Mr. Swallow. And if you'll recall, Mr. Swallow was a pharmacology student at Ivy University. F f pharmacology his laboratory contained highly advanced chemistry equipment. In fact, without such equipment, the culprit could never have obtained such a rare and special poison. Well, Miss Hawthorne, it seems you had access to such a poison after all. And then it was a matter of slipping it into the victim's coffee when he wasn't looking. The only person who could have done that was the one sitting in his very table. You. No. Order, order, order! C could it be? That's nothing but a baseless accus- May I say something, Madame Faye? What is it, Miss Hawthorne? The amount of poison in the coffee was two teaspoons, correct? In order to carry that much liquid, you would need some kind of container. Well, yes, that's true. I was searched immediately after the incident took place. Quite true. In fact, the entire courthouse was turned upside down. But they didn't find a suspicious container anywhere, did they? She's right. They even mentioned that in the report. Well, you could have easily gotten rid of something that small. Excuse me, madame, this is a court of law. If you're saying I threw the poison container away, I think you need to show some kind of proof. P proof She got me good with that. Provide some evidence or I'll have to disallow this line of questioning, Miss Faye. Unless we can come up with some evidence, we're going to lose this lead. The 
police conducted a full body search of Dahlia and of the entire courthouse. And yet the container holding the poison disappeared right after the crime occurred. If you're going to accuse the young lady of committing the murder, then where is the container the poison was carried in? What happened to it? It's pretty obvious at this point. It's this bottle that she gave to Phoenix. A little bottle, you could put poison in there. You were forced to get rid of the container in a hurry, weren't you? And that's why you passed it on to someone that had nothing to do with the case. Someone that you knew wouldn't be searched. Who is this person? Mr. Phoenix Wright, of course. So the defendant was this witness's accomplice? Of course not. She gave the poison to him, disguised as a present. What? But, but, but that's... Hmm. That's a charming little necklace. Is this a little bottle? It's really quite cute. So what about it? What does it mean, Miss Faye? The day that the witness met and felt Mr. Phoenix Wright was eight months ago. August 27th, the very same day as the poisoning incident. Under the pretense of love, the witness gave my client a present. All for the purpose of hiding the one piece of evidence that would give her away. What? Are you saying there's a deadly poison in here? No, there's no longer any poison in that bottle. However, I'm certain if the crime lab were to analyse it, they would find a trace amount. No! Ah! Order! Order in the court! Ah, uh, um... On behalf of Dolly, I object. M Mr. Wright, control yourself. I, I won't let you bully her like this. Mr. Wright, I thought I told you to stay in your seat. Mr. Wright, why? Why are you going through so much trouble to protect her? Why? B because... Because I'm madly in love with her. Hmm. Hmm. Madly in love. I haven't heard anyone say that in a long time. Mr. Wright, have you ever thought about this? Why exactly would a woman like Dahlia Hawthorne want to date you anyway? Well, I guess she must be madly in love with me too. Oh, Mr. Wright, please, open your eyes. At this point in the trial, I think it should be obvious to everyone. The real reason that Dahlia Hawthorne is dating you is... Dahlia Hawthorne was not, and is not, was not, and is not, madly in love with you. The only thing she's after is that bottle necklace you love to wear around your neck. My n necklace Back there in the waiting room, you said that yourself. Yeah, but she's so shy. Every time I see her, she always says the same thing to me. Please give it back now. What a strange girl asking for a present back like that. For Dahlia Hawthorne, that necklace is irrefutable evidence of her crime. That's why she absolutely had to get it back. You're lying. But you never gave it back to her. And to make things worse for her, you insisted on showing it to everyone you met. That's why she... I don't... I don't believe you. No! That's a lie! <laughs> Mia, uh, are you alright? Uh, the defendant, he's, he's getting away. Bailiff, hurry after him. Mia, Mia, are you alright? Yes, uh, I think so. That boy, he went completely insane. Where, where's Mr. Wright? Looks like the bailiff caught him, so he should be back soon enough. Thank goodness. Oh no! What is it? The bottle necklace! Miss Hawthorne's present! It's gone! What? That's terrible! Mr. Wright must have grabbed it when he slammed into me! Foolish boy, that's the only thing that could have saved him. What in blazes are we supposed to do now? Mr. Wright, this sort of behaviour is unprecedented in the history of this court. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm afraid that your apology is not enough. Mr. Wright, 
What did you do with the bottle necklace? F forgive me. I... I... I'm sorry. It's okay. Just give back the necklace. I ate it. You what? You... you... you ate it? It was too big to swallow, so I had to chew it into little little bits first, but yeah. Ugh. What the? What? What is he doing now? Your Honor, you've got to stop the trial. Mr. Wright, Mr. Wright, are you feeling okay? Did your stomach hurt? That bottle you swallowed may have had some poison left in it. <laughs> it seems the defendant has proven the prosecution's case for us. Clearly that bottle did not contain a deadly poison. How can you be so sure? <laughs> I think that's obvious. As you can see, the defendant is still very much alive. As for the poison, more like a fledgling defense attorney's overactive imagination. Hmm. So it would seem. I mean, according to Mia's explanation, the poison was already poured into Diego's coffee. Like, it wouldn't, there wouldn't be very much poison left in the bottle, and it's lethal at a certain amount, and... This is just silly, like... She, she literally said there was no poison left in the bottle. Oh my god. No, it must be some mistake. The bottle must not have had any poison left in it, like I said earlier. Either that or the poison must have lost its potency? There, there. It's alright, rookie. Trusting your client is the most noble thing a defense attorney can do. And it's heartwarming to see that you place this much faith in Mr. Wright. But that's how it is for us on the prosecution side, too. For example, I would trust the witness, Miss Hawthorne, with my very life. Which is why I can state that your assessment of her is completely wrong. That's enough. Unfortunately, Miss Fay, I cannot accept your explanation of the events. B but why? This may be impossible for a beginner like you to understand. But in a court of law, evidence is everything. Ugh. Even after I proved so much, is she going to get away with everything? Well, now that the suspicion surrounding Miss Hawthorne has been cleared up, I would like to proceed with the trial. M Mr. Wright? I'm sorry, Ms. Fay. It totally slipped my mind. I'm really, really sorry. I know you believed in me, and I feel like I really let you down. Mr. Wright, what are you trying to say? Um, there's something I forgot to tell you. What is it? That day, the day I met Doug Swallow. That girl, you shouldn't see her anymore. Hey, it's none of your business. I'm telling you for your sake, if you continue to see her, it's gonna be bad news. Y you're lying! Just listen to me. There's something you need to know about that girl. Last night, someone stole some poison from our lab. Poison? The same thing happened eight months ago. A drug sample was stolen. She came to the lab that time, too. It could only have been her. That girl is a thief. Stop it. D d don't talk about her like that. I mean... Stealing things is good, so... <laughs> is it true? Did he really say that? That's ridiculous. There's one more thing. After I pushed him that day, I got worried and came back to have a look. And she was there. Dolly was right there. She was crouched down next to him. What? She told me not to ever tell anyone about it, but... I'm sorry, Dolly. Your Honor, this is... The defendant is... Miss Faye, you tell them. Dolly didn't do it. She, she's innocent. So Dahlia stole poison eight months ago too, huh? If you put that together with Mr. Wright's testimony, then there's only one possible conclusion. 
The defense believes that Miss Dahlia Hawthorne stole some poison on the night before she killed Doug Swallow. The night before? Naturally, her motive for stealing it was to kill someone. Miss Faye. If you're so certain of your theory, then let me ask you this. Mia, this is your last chance. Think carefully now. There's something that she desperately wanted to get back. Therefore... Exactly who was Miss Dahlia Hawthorne planning to kill? Phoenix Wright, of course. There was one person that was standing squarely in Miss Dahlia Hawthorne's way, and that person was... Mr. Phoenix Wright. M -m 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 me <laughs> That's preposterous. After all, it was Doug Swallow that was murdered. Well, it's true that that's how things worked out. But, let's remember that Mr. Swallow died of electrocution, not poison. The person that Miss Hawthorne was planning to poison was, in fact, you, Phoenix Wright. There's no one else that it could be. But how can that be? I, I thought Mr. Wright and Miss Hawthorne were in love. D did you listen? <laughs> to what Mia's been saying all this time? Poor Mr. Wright. This must be killing him. Hang in there. I'll bring her to justice. I swear it. As I said before, the only thing Miss Hawthorne truly cared about was the one piece of evidence linking her to that incident eight months ago. That's right. The bottle necklace. That's all she cared about. But even so, why, why would you go so far as to murder him? Eight months ago, just after the fall of that attorney in, that, in the basement cafeteria. Talia Hawthorne could think of only one thing. How to get rid of the bottle necklace as quickly as possible. N no, it, it can't be. It was a pretty good move she made too. The evidence was missing for a long time. But there was just one big problem. Although she got him to hide the evidence, Mr. Wright refused to return it to her. To him, the very the tiny little bottle was a cherished treasure. He even showed it to everyone he met. Y you mean that's why she tried to kill Mr. Wright? Correct, Your Honor. It was to retrieve that piece of evidence. That can't be true! Feeny, what a joke you are. Honestly, how can any woman ever count on you for anything? I even told you time and time again to keep your trap shut about me and that necklace. You disgust me. M Miss Hawthorne? It appears that we're nearing the end of this trial. Fine. I can tell you plan on making me into a criminal, no matter what I say. You are a criminal, Miss Hawthorne. We'll see about that. But first, where's your evidence? It seems your sn sniveling little crybaby of a client has eaten the bottle as a snack. Ugh. Well, um... Hey, old man, are you senile or something? Why don't you say something instead of sitting there with that dumb look on your face? M Miss Hawthorne, what's happened to you? Hm. Are you really that shocked? Or do you prefer me this way, Mr. Judge? <laughs> with absolutely no proof, you treat a voluntary witness like she's a mass murderer. Well, I have nothing more to say. I'll be heading home now if you don't mind. But we're not finished. Fine. Then ask this nasty old hag to finish up already. I can't let her get away this time. Stop, Mia. If you keep on pushing with any evidence, you could pay the ultimate price as a lawyer. The ultimate price? You'd be forced to take off your attorney's badge forever, I'm afraid. N no. Better think it over carefully, Ms. Fay. Or should I say, Ms. Gray? What? <laughs> well, Ms. Fay, can you provide evidence that would establish her guilt once and for all? Hmm, if I mess up here, my career as a lawyer is over. But to be honest, at this point I don't have any evidence that's well founded. 
Even so, I'd rather lose my attorney's badge than let her get away with murder. Your Honor, the defense would like to present proof. Impossible, you can't possibly. Stupid woman. It is the opinion of the court that there has already been enough discussion. Therefore, I will allow only one piece of evidence to be presented. D just one? If you are unable to establish her guilt, then I'm afraid that a very harsh verdict will immediately be handed down on Mr. Wright. I understand, Your Honor. I can just imagine the headlines for tomorrow's newspaper. Up-and-coming lawyer plummets to earth before she gets the chance to soar. She was planning to poison Mr. Wright. If that's the case, then the poison was probably in there. Well then, Miss Faye, please present your evidence. Show to this court irrefutable proof that Miss Hawthorne was planning to poison Mr. Wright. Interestingly, you'll notice this only has three blips of penalty. Like, it won't kill you in one hit, even though you're only supposed to get one chance. Anyway, this is the evidence. The Cold Killer X. Because they eat lunch together, and his bottle went missing around lunch on this day, which means she was trying to poison it, and then the bottle was found held by Doug Swallow, which suggests that Dahlia gave it to him to hide the evidence. Here it is, Your Honor. The evidence that will prove her guilt once and for all. Cold Killer X? Phoenix Wright's beloved cold medicine. Hee 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 hee. Does our rookie defense attorney have a bit of a cold? If I did, I still wouldn't take this cold medicine. After all, it's been poisoned. W what? Remember what the defendant said in his testimony. But I lost my bottle of it around lunchtime on the day of the accident. I always eat with Dolly, just the two of us. She was the one who took his bottle of Cold Killer X. Then she poisoned it, knowing that Mr. Wright was going to take some. Now you're really grasping at straws. After all, it was the victim, Doug Swallow, that was holding the medicine. I would like the court to recall the crime that happened here eight months ago. Where did Miss Hawthorne hide the evidence? Huh? What are you talking about? Eight months ago, the poison was hidden in her bottle necklace, which she then gave to someone else for safekeeping. Someone she'd accidentally run into in the reading room. My client, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Yes, that's right. She did the same thing this time as well. After shoving the victim, Mr. Phoenix Wright left the scene of the crime. That is when the murderer, Dahlia Hawthorne, appeared. With her, she was carrying the poison bottle of Cold Killer X. This, of course, was so she could carry out her plan to murder Mr. Wright. Hmm, I believe she did testify that she was going to meet with the defendant. Yes, and she heard and saw everything that happened at the scene of the crime, including what the defendant and victim were arguing about, and the cut electrical cable. That's when she realised, I can't allow Doug Swallow to live. She used the severed electrical cable to silence him forever. Unfortunately for her, this is when the problem occurred. Mr. Wright, who she thought had left the scene, came back to check on the victim. And on top of that, because of the power outage, some students showed up as well. It's hardly any wonder that she was, as she put it, in a state of panic. Recall that she was carrying that bottle of poisoned cold medicine. She must have thought, what if they searched me like they did eight months ago? Uh, eight months ago? Yes, she disposed of the evidence exactly the same way she did back then. She had someone else hold it. In this case, Doug Swallow. Oh, come on now, everyone. Surely you aren't fooled, are you? This stupid woman, she's nothing but a filthy, stinking liar. Right, Mr. Prosecutor? Huh? I yes, that's exactly right. It's just pure desperation. Hmm, I wonder which of us is the desperate one. So, Miss Hawthorne, this cold medicine, I wonder if you wouldn't mind taking some. 
Well, Mr. Right Eye thought necklace of yours, right? Now it's your turn to prove your innocence. What do you say? If I'm just a filthy, stinking liar, then there's no need to worry. So come on, show us. I dare you to take some of this medicine right now. <laughs> Mia, Faye. Mia, Faye. Do you think you've won? Well, do you, Mia Faye? <laughs> That's just fine. For the time being, victory is yours. For the time being? Well, I have a very long memory, you know. You and I will meet again. I'm certain of it. Well then, Mr. Judge. I'll see you later too, okay? Huh? Uh, why, um, yes? I'm gonna go spend a little quality time with the men in blue now. I wish you all the best. Finally all over. I, I refuse to accept this. The defense hasn't shown a scrap of evidence to support their outrageous claim. But, but even so, your witness seems to have accepted it. I don't care. I'm Winston Payne. And I don't believe one word that this rookie lawyer has said. Well then, Mr. Payne, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. I yes Would you care to try this cold medicine? What? Just a little earlier, I could have sworn you said. There, there. It's all right, rookie. For example, I would trust the witness, Miss Hawthorne, with my very life. So, if she's so trustworthy, then I'm sure there couldn't possibly be any poison in here, right? Uh, well, um, you see, um, yes. And here comes the backpedal. Come on now, rookie killer. Show this rookie how it's done. How much trust do you really have for this woman? Are you willing to bet your life? Yeah, my hair, it's flying off, my beautiful hair, no! <laughs> what? Yeah, that's why he doesn't have that hair in the other games. That is the canon reason. <laughs> um, Mr. Payne, about Miss Dahlia Hawthorne? Y y yes, Your Honor. I'll file papers for immediate arrest. Hmm, tragic, but not surprising. I knew there was something suspicious about her from the very beginning. Don't lie, just admit you were wrong. By the way, Miss Faye? Y yes, Your Honor? Was it just me, or did you and Miss Dahlia Hawthorne seem to know each other? Your Honor, whether we did or not has no bearing on this case. Hmm, very well. Uh, Mr. Payne, this can't be happening. It's a nightmare. It's like losing to my daughter. <laughs> it fears Mr. Payne has lost his spirit along with his hair. Does the defendant have anything further to say? It, it can't be true. My dear Dolly. <laughs> Hmm, very well then. I believe I am ready to pass judgement and bring this trial to an end. The court finds the defendant, Phoenix Wright, not guilty. Confetti! It is kind of weird that I have confetti after every trial. <laughs> this court is adjourned. Especially since you always find someone else guilty in the process. Seems a bit, bit rude to celebrate. <laughs> um... April 11th, 3.16pm, District Court, Defendant Lobby, number 3. Mia, you were wonderful in there! Thank you for everything, Mr. Grossberg. During the verdict, I thought my hemorrhoids were going to explode like Mount Vesuvius! Um, Mr. Grossberg, do you, um, maybe think you could stop talking about them? Hm, <laughs> that's rather rude. <laughs> anyway, this case really made me think. What does it really mean to have a relationship of mutual trust with the client? Perhaps it is we veteran lawyers who have lost sight of this. Oh, Mr. Wright. Congratulations. Th thanks. Um, you know, I was thinking. Go on. 
The dolly that I saw up there on the witness stand. I don't think that was really her. Uh, what? Yeah, the dolly I know could never have said those kinds of terrible things. Maybe, maybe she was like, I don't know, a fake or something. Boy, this poor kid still hasn't got a clue. You need to forget about her, Mr. Wright, for your own sake. Yeah, you're right. That's probably for the best. Also, you need to relax a bit more. Try to grow up a little. But, but... Out of all my friends, everyone says I'm the most grown up. Yeek, what kind of company does this guy keep? Right now, I... I'm starting to become a lawyer myself. That's what you keep saying. But I thought you were in the art department? Well, yeah, I am. But there's a friend that I desperately want to help. And if I hurry, then I should still be able to save him in time. I see. Say, Miss Faye? A lawyer is someone who can help people when they're in trouble, right? Mr. Wright, I'm still new at this myself. But I think that's exactly what a lawyer is. Okay, I'm gonna do it. I'll study my butt off. I'll become a lawyer for sure. I hope... I hope we see each other again someday. Maybe even in court. It's been five years since I was acquitted of all charges. I became a lawyer like I planned and managed to save my friend. But Mia has passed on to a better place. For me, this trial brings up a lot of painful memories. But it also brings up some very precious ones. And memories that I thought would never rise to the surface again. Mia is gone now. But even so, I can hear her in my mind. Phoenix, no matter what, always believe in your client. In a court of law, your greatest weapon is your belief. Five long years. Something has happened that's made me think back to her words of wisdom. But that is a story for another day. The end. And that's turn about memories for you. Uh, I hope you appreciated my dahlia. I did my best. <laughs> um... I was a little reluctant to start this video because Dahlia is such an iconic character, I guess, that I didn't know if I could get her voice right. Um, but yeah, Turnabout Memories. Uh, next time, The Stolen Turnabout, which is a really good case. I really like this one. Honestly, this whole game is very good. Maybe Episode 3 is a little weaker, but it's still pretty good. <laughs> Oh my goodness, yes, I'd like to save. Uh, save it here. So yeah, next time, the stolen turnabout. As you might guess, it's about, like, thieves and stuff. And it's really good, and I'm looking forward to it. Thanks for watching. Bye! Just leaving it go for a little longer so I don't accidentally cut myself off, because I don't know how much time it has before it cuts off. Been having trouble with that. Anyway. <laughs>